بسم الله السلام عليكم السلام عليكم السلام عليكم السلام عليكم it is thursday night and uh, i decided to jump on here live because hey why not right <laughs> alhamdulillah welcome everyone whoever's joining live uh, give us your salam would love to know where you are calling from where you are watching from mashallah uh it's a thursday night here in <laughs> in cairo mashallah and i decided to jump on live because i haven't been live in a while and uh, i want to say a huge thank you to everybody who watched uh the video with rebecca barrett um where we talked about womanhood modern womanhood feminism uh and lots of other cool things It was a great discussion, mashallah. Really, really enjoyed it. And it looks like you guys did too because the video is doing really well. So I just want to say a big thank you. Uh, please do post your comments. I want to see more comments. I like to see comments on the videos. So please, please, please post your comments and share the video. I think... We want more people to see these conversations, right? Mashallah. We've got sisters from the UK. We've got Illinois, USA. Mashallah. Excellent. Who else have we got in the house? Who else have we got in the house? Oh, yes. And Sister Asha says, uh, I want to repeat of the Rebecca conversation. We are planning that. I think the next one will be on her channel, um, but it will be before uh, the end of the year, inshallah. So look out for that. To be in love. Right. And uh, Sumaya, he is from Pakistan. MashaAllah. Nice to see you. Nice to see everyone again. MashaAllah. Tabarakallah. So I wanted to just jump on here because I had a couple of conversations in the past um, two weeks. But before I start, before I start, let me make sure that everyone knows about the conference that's coming up. Okay. Remember last year? Remember Secrets of Successful Wives? Remember the awesomeness? that was that conference three-day conference well it is time for us to go again <laughs> mashallah oh, miss louise in sweden mashallah nice to see you alhamdulillah lovely to see you mashallah so um oh my goodness me wow okay we have to shout this out toot toot mashallah jazakallah khairan uh, brother bilal for the 99.99 super chat If I had an air horn, it would be going off right now. That's definitely the biggest super chat that I've ever had. Uh, so thank you so much, brother. Um, much appreciated. Yes, and Rebecca, yes, she should be addressing the young girls. We all need to be having these conversations, right? Because everybody is in some way impacted by the media and all the messaging from the media, right? So unfortunately our muslim girls are not exempt so so much has happened guys so much has happened which i won't be able to go it all into today but let's start with the conference okay so i'm going to put the link in the chat for you to register and grab your tickets uh so that you don't miss it out because remember last year remember how awesome it was mashallah remember the speakers that we had Sister Hale Banani, Sister Maryam Lemu, we had so many amazing speakers and we touched on so many important topics. Well, this year, the theme of the conference is Secrets of Successful Marriage, All the Stuff They Don't Tell You. Okay, so it's all the stuff they don't talk about, the, all the stuff we don't talk about, the things that your parents never told you, the things that the successfully married people don't even talk about, right? They just keep it to themselves. Well, we want to bring all of that to this channel, inshallah, at the end of the year. So I've put the link in the comments. It will be, it's in the description of the video. Go and register. It's free. Register, sign up, share it with all your family and friends. Who have we got? Who have we got this year? We have, uh, okay, let me start from the beginning. So I'm going to start with respect to the scholars, right? So I'm going to start with the scholars. And from the, the shiuch that I know, or the scholars that I know, we've got uh, proper OGs. So we've got Sheikh Abdullah Hakim Quick. You guys may be familiar with him. I don't know how many decades he's been married for, mashallah. Wonderful brother, has always been very supportive of my work and the channel and the community. So Sheikh Abdullah Hakim Quick will be addressing us. Also, Dr. Muhammad Salah, you may be familiar with him, Huda TV, Iman Channel. Uh, he's, mashallah, one of our neighbors here in Egypt, and he's going to be speaking to us. 
I wanted to um, dig deep with him from a scholarly perspective on the hadith about the woman is married for four things. So we're going to have a conversation about that. Then we've got uh, Sister Hale Banani who's be speaking inshallah we've got Sister Alia Umrayan for the first time on this channel and you may know Sister Alia Umrayan either from Honesty Talks which some of you love and some of you are not sure about okay but whichever way you you go uh, you need to come and hear her speak at this event because mashallah I've, I've I've known her for a very long time we go way back and I have um spoken with her many times she has a really wonderful way of delivering lectures and delivering information and she's going to be sharing about how reverts can get married so the tips and strategies for reverts to find a spouse and to you know to, to have good marriages mashallah um, and you know that she is uh, the head of the founder of solace and they now have a marriage service so it just it fits beautifully mashallah <laughs> so there's her there's also ustada dalia ayub that some of you may know and some of you may not know, right? And uh, I met her when I was invited to Australia to go and speak there. And I have to say, I just, I, um, my heart just, it just warmed to her and her heart just warmed to me. We've never spoken before. We've never done work together, but we sat together in the, the vehicle that was taking us around. And from the first time we sat together, we just opened up, mashallah. We just opened up. She was so honest and open with me. I was so open and honest with her. And she gave me some advice, guys. And I said this to her. I wrote it in her book. I said, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses me with the opportunity to give da'wah again after I take this break, um, the reward will be yours. You will share in that reward because she said some things to me. I won't say them here. Maybe I'll share them at another time. But she said some things to me that really, they touched my heart, you know, and I really believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, you know, he sent her with a message for me. Um, because when we were having these conversations, I was like, I am so done. I am so done. I just want to get away from social media. I want to get offline. I want to just get away from everything. And mashallah, Allah sent her with some words of advice that just touched my heart. And so inshallah, I, you know, all you guys know I'm taking a break. I'm coming offline. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives me the tawfiq to come back, she's going to get the reward for that. <laughs> so, so she's coming. She's speaking. Who else have we got? Goodness me, we've got such a long list of speakers. It's crazy. So let's talk about the people we've got that you guys know from the channel. Baba Ali is coming. Sister Amina Jane O'Rourke, which you guys, you know you love her, right? Uh, um Talha is coming, mashallah. She didn't speak at the last conference. She's speaking at this one. You know how much we love her videos, right? And her perspective. Um, Brother Wa'il Ibrahim is coming back, mashallah. Uh, we've got Sister Khadija al Kadur, She's coming back. We've got uh, some new speakers as well who you haven't met before that I've kind of, you know, made links with. And then they're coming, inshallah. Who else? Bi'ithnillah, we've got Imam Shabir Hassan. He's going to be coming. Coach Nazir, I'm still trying to pin him down, but inshallah, he'll be there. Make dua, yeah? Um, and uh, like a whole list of people, some you'll know them, some you won't know them, but the contents of the conference, literally the stuff that they don't talk about, stuff no one tells you, yeah? The secret things that make marriages work, that make it easier to get married. And for those of you who did not manage to attend my workshop uh understanding your value as a muslim wife you will be happy to know that i will be teaching that workshop in the conference so put in the chat if you've already registered because i want to see if you've already registered and if we can expect to see you at the conference of course it's online it's over three days uh literally from 10 a.m until 11 p.m we've got talks 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 conversations, podcasts, interviews, uh, panel discussions, Q and A's, all the good things, mashallah. So it's going to be a really packed three days, but you know that we want to spend, uh, like see the new year in together, right? We want to go from 2022 to 2023 together. Halas, that's what's on. Okay. So guys, if you're not sure, if you didn't know what your plans were for the 31st of December or the 1st of January, now, you know, yes. So who's registered? Let's see. Hmm. 
let's see mashallah hr's registered ra's registered come on guys everybody you need to get in there you need to go on the link and register and share it guys don't keep it to yourselves don't be doing that okay don't you must share the khair don't be selfish with it okay <laughs> alhamdulillah yes and it's absolutely free 100 free and it's just gonna be epic inshallah so enough about that i want to just deal with i want to share with you a message that i got from a uh, a very dear friend of mine's daughter and i think it deserves a conversation that's what the title of this is about okay let me just bring it up for you um and i i think i will only be able to um address this in detail in a proper call because I literally just jumped on here and I you know I wasn't really prepared I just thought you know the children have left they've all got things that they're doing so I was like you know what let me just jump on here and uh, connect with everyone mashallah dad just registered nice thank you very much make sure you share it guys make sure you share so I had uh, a, a very very good friend of mine's daughter reach out to me and so she she said some of the stuff that you've been saying online, like I have an issue with it, basically. So I was saying to her, like, okay, so what, what is it that I've been saying that you don't agree with, etc. And so she said, it seems as if you're trying to get women to make better choices for themselves. Oh, sorry, it doesn't seem as if you're trying to get women to make better choices for themselves, but rather that they should make choices that benefit men because men are the ones who are triggered when women reject them because they aren't six foot or aren't earning a certain amount, etc. Overall, the things you've been saying seem to be bashing single older women and women in general, but maybe I've missed the point you're making, or maybe I'm just a triggered single boss babe raising feminine kids. Okay, so <laughs> um, I wanted to address this because actually the, the genesis of this conversation was where she sent me a TikTok where uh, a man was saying, was in defense of, of women, sort of modern women online, saying the only reason why these men are criticizing, you know, modern women and saying, oh, you're going to die alone is because they are salty that they're not getting married and they are the ones who are scared of dying alone. So they're projecting their fears onto women and telling women that they're going to die alone. Okay, so that's where it started. And um, Bismillah, I wanted to clarify um, in case it's necessary that, and I spoke to, to her mother today as well, and I said the same thing. And I said to her that anything that I have said on this channel or online, certainly over the last kind of year and a half, has been informed by what I'm seeing happening. Now, that in and of itself is going to be biased, okay? It's going to be biased because I'm a person in a context and I see things from a certain perspective like we all do. But my bias is not towards men or against women. My bias is towards what I see as the correct way in terms of the dean. Uh, the best way or the correct way in terms of the dean, um, that's my bias. Okay, so that will mean that at times I may sound like I'm bashing so-and-so or I'm criticizing or I'm being critical of a particular behavior, a particular attitude. And I wanted to be clear that when we are having these conversations where we're bringing up certain issues within the community, where we're bringing up um, certain things that we feel need remedying or that we think need remedying or need brought to light, let's remember that these are behaviors, okay? And it is okay to critique behaviors, uh, especially behaviors that are not in keeping with, you know, our dean, right? Um, but very often we conflate the doer and the deed, right? So we, you know, if we hear a criticism of a particular behavior, we take it as a criticism of that person who is behaving in that way, like that person is bad. But my, my intention has always been to shed light on things that 
I see from my perspective as being problematic. Now, my audience is women. Majority of my audience is women. So I'm going to be speaking more about women's things and towards women. Like I want to talk to my sisters. I know that if you have come from a context where you feel that, no, the women are doing their best, right? And and the thing is, whenever we have these conversations about men and women, we have to admit that we can't generalize, really. It's very difficult to generalize because not only are we all individuals, but even within communities, within generations, there are differences and there are nuances, right? So anytime we try to have a conversation that says people do this or men do this and women do this, it's naturally going to be, uh, there are going to be um, exceptions and there are going to be times when it's like, no, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't, that's not true. And of course we can't speak for all circumstances. So anyway, long story short, the types of things that we've been talking about over the past year have been things that really not many other people are talking about. So when we were at the marriage conference, uh, the one in in London last month, one of the brothers uh, said to me, "You know, I'm I'm really I'm really surprised at what you're saying and the kinds of things that you're saying." And I was like, "Why?" He said, "Because." That is the normative Islamic position, but the community and society has changed so much that we, the people of knowledge and the du'at, we dare not say those things, right? We cannot say those things because we know that it's going to bring a backlash, it's going to cause problems, it's going to make you know hurt people's feelings, it's going to make people feel bad, or we're afraid of pushing people away from the deen, right? So it was almost like, you know, he was really happy that, you know, at least a woman is saying this stuff because now we as men, we don't have to take the heat. okay? because if we dare to say, you know, for example, uh, you know, the topic of of motherhood. Right. Uh, Or the topic of, you know, being patient with your, your husband and not kind of, you know, breaking up your home or whatever. Is that if we say stuff like that it's cancel city, right? But you can say that because you're a sister. So long story short, some of what I say may trigger you if it hits a nerve, right? If it hits a raw nerve with you, you will be triggered and that's okay. Okay. It's okay to be triggered because it just means that there is a kernel of truth in there that you are not comfortable with. Now, can people work on delivery? Could I work on delivery? Could any of you work on delivery? For sure. But the truth remains. So if there is a kernel of truth in there that is stinging a bit, that's a sign to you to say, maybe this is an area of growth for me. Maybe this is an area of evolution for me. Maybe this is an area that I need to lean into a little bit. Because it's exactly like, I I see it exactly like when we talk about, you know, men who are not financially responsible, right? If we do, if we have the same types of conversations where men are not capable of looking after a family, but they want to get married to, you know what we tell them. It's your responsibility to find, you know, to, 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 to be able to support a family, to, to work to support your family. Now, for a man who, for whatever reason, can't or won't do that, that's upsetting. What do you mean? You're telling me I can't have a wife just because I'm broke? Uh, yeah, kind of. And that's not nice, but that's the reality, right? So every time we've had these types of, but I think men take these things differently. And again, could be a generalization, but from what I've noticed, men, they kind of take it on the chin. They kind of like laugh about it and they're kind of like, but you know, they take it on the chin. But us as women, we tend to take things personally. And if something touches a raw nerve with you, 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 you absorb it into yourself. You make it about yourself. Right. And all I'm saying is, although that may be a natural tendency my invitation to you is to try to distance yourself from the information 
and just ask yourself, is it true? Does she have a point? Is this relevant to me in any way? Can I learn anything from this? And if the answer is no, keep it pushing, keep it moving, right? I've had people who will come to me. Remember at the conference, I said, you know, for, for those of us who've been married, right? And we're late, early, later on in life and we don't want to have children and all that, you know, like we've talked about this on the channel before, to expect like a six foot practicing brother who's a PhD and wealthy and is going to travel with you every year, like that is an unrealistic expectation, okay? And maybe you need to look at that. And a sister came up to me from the audience later on and she said, you know that that kind of unrealistic expectation that you described, that's me, that's my life, that's what I'm living. And I said to her, sis, I know. It, it's not like it can never happen. I had that too, but that's not the norm. And it's not fair to tell people that that's the norm or that that's what they should be aiming for and they shouldn't settle for less. So these types of things, again, again, everyone is free to believe whatever they want to believe, right? Because your beliefs shape your reality. That's the truth, right? Your beliefs shape your experience of this world. All I'm saying is, if I have said anything that has hurt anyone of, you know, anyone who's listened to me or anybody who's followed me or anything like that, especially, especially people who looked up to me uh, and saw me as some kind of role model or an inspiration and have found that my ideas and the things I'm talking about now make them feel differently towards me, all I would say is, just an invitation to introspect. I could be wrong in your context, right? My advice could not be relevant to you at all. And there will be people for whom my advice is not relevant. And if that's, if that's the case, keep it moving. There will be people for sure who are not, ref not, not like my advice, all the stuff I've been saying, it is irrelevant to them. And that's perfectly fine. But there are other people who need to hear what I'm saying. We've got lots of them on this channel, mashallah. And I said that, so, so many sisters, it's actually shocking to me how many sisters contacted me after I emailed my list and told them that I won't be around next year. How many contacted me back and said, thank you. Those conversations you've been having have saved my marriage this year, like this year. This has been the best year in my marriage. They've saved my marriage. They've saved me. I didn't realize how much toxicity I was holding until I heard you say the things that you say. And so if it's for you, then it's for you. And if it's not for you, then feel free to just say, well, that's her opinion, or that may apply to some people, but that's not my reality. And it's fine, you know literally it's fine but for me as I said to my friend I pray I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides me and all of us but me because I've got the platform right that he guides me to speak the truth in the best way if I'm not speaking the truth then let may he shut my mouth right and if I am speaking the truth, but in a way that is pushing people away from the truth, then may he rectify me, but allow me to speak the truth in the best way, right? And as long as I'm doing that, I really don't care what anyone says. Uh, it's, it's, it's not my concern, right? That's, it's not my responsibility, not, not my concern. It's not my responsibility, yeah? And it's not anyone's responsibility, really. As long as you're speaking the truth in the best way, it's not your responsibility how people take it because people will take what you say and they will filter it through their own experience and their own lens and kind of what they have lived and what they know and what they believe. That's the filter, right? For some people, the filter lets your ideas through in a way that is positive. For some people, when they filter what you're saying, it's going to come and have a negative response so 
it's a it's a call to introspection it's an invitation to kind of look deeper and say what is going on here and try to as much as we can my dear sisters my dear women try to separate your emotions you know when brother nasser was on the channel and we used to talk about the thinking feeling connection and we used to talk about you know regulating your emotions it's important it's important because our emotions if we just let our emotions just go like that. We're going to be getting triggered by a lot of things. And some of those things are, are beneficial or even necessary for us to hear. But because we're in this emotional state, we can't hear them. And I wouldn't want us to be in there, inshallah. Yes, thank you. Just offering an opinion and general advice. People should be able to translate that to their own situations. Exactly. And on that note, guys, I am going to let you go. Have a fantastic night. Uh, thank you so much for those who attended live. Uh, the re put the re oh, if you're here live, you have to put two live crew in the chat. And if you're watching on the replay, then please, please, please put replay gang in the comments. And uh, I'll be there to uh, like your comment and uh, would love to hear your thoughts on it, inshallah. Let me know if we're going to be seeing you at the... Um, if we'll be seeing you at the conference and uh, yep, yeah, inshallah, any issues that you would like us to address in the conference, put them in the chat, in the chat, uh, in the comments, and I will see you later on in the week, inshallah. Okay, guys. And those of you who wanted to write a children's book, come over to my Instagram, hop on to the five day children's book challenge. We're going to have loads of fun next week, inshallah. Have a lovely evening, guys, and a great weekend. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.